Honeybee13 writes, I've been a scrapper for many years and I've recently found new enthusiasm for balance. My problem is that I would usually use bits and pieces from one collection. I would love to know how to pick bits and pieces from a variety of companies and know what will work together. Glitter Girl, can you help Honeybee13 coordinate complementary collections? Of course I can. This is something we've discussed a little bit earlier this year and I'll link the coordinating video that showed um, what we did with this question the first time but I've had many requests to come back and revisit this topic especially with a seasonal point of view so looking to looking to your stash to figure out what supplies you could use for holiday themed pages and you don't necessarily have to be looking only at Christmas collections so I just wanted to demonstrate with a few different collections and then I I'm going to pull the bits and pieces from those collections to create a Christmassy layout today. So if I were to pull out this collection, which is the sunny side range from Pebbles, certainly not something that screams Christmas straight away. We've got all these multicolored butterflies, very spring-like colors, lots of polka dots and stripes and energy, um, turquoise ledger paper there things like that um, and it was marketed as a summer collection but within that collection I have this green print and um, the green sort of uh, ivy pattern um, rows of leaves and on the other side a white with a green polka dot now if I take this away from all that spring motif this is certainly a paper that could work for Christmas even though it was a spring summer collection so I'm going to keep that one from sunny side Likewise, I have this collection which I love. It's called Dewey Decimal from Lawn Fawn. And it was an autumn collection, a back to school look with lots of things from the library and typewriters, card catalogs, a lot of turquoise, a lot of purple, and um, well, kind of a, a, a wine colored purple, not a, um, a royal purple. Some very trendy things like hexagons, um, a little bit of a mix match parquet look there but then it also includes this pattern which has a great um, bunting pattern on one side but also this red on red stripe so it's um, a, a more orange based red in the narrow stripe and a burgundy rich red in the wider stripe on the diagonal definitely something that if I take all those other colors away I'm looking at something very traditional Christmas and if I put these two together I am starting to create a Christmas collection from something from spring summer and something from the autumn so I'm getting there and then I'm going to head to Fifth and Frolic by Dear Lizzie which is a very feminine girly line it has a lot of pink a lot of aqua and um, and a lot of very soft tones but it also includes quite a bit of yellow and yellow works really well in Christmas collections or, or Christmas collections that you put together yourself and um, because it, it's the flat version of the color gold and gold is certainly a color that works well at Christmas so I pulled out a few different yellow elements from the Dear Lizzie collection and I think this um, yellow and white triangle print is something that's um, great to use in larger pieces and then this gray typewriter print is something I really like as um, narrow strips but truth be told I actually really like this page as a full page background as well it's one that takes ink really well and if you want to do sort of a one quarter of the page design with lots of detail this is a great pattern because it has that good mix of it's just one color plus white but there's actually a lot of detail if you look very closely at the pattern and um, so something good to use as a full sheet but in this case I'm looking at just using it as little border strips and then this cut apart sheet um, which includes some things that could definitely work at a as a home for the holidays type theme so you've got yellow you've got kind of a classic little house with trees and um, little hearts about home and family and also some just great pieces that can work well as journaling box and you can use the whole four by six so you can cut it down into smaller pieces um, this isn't particularly offensive for Christmas as well and if you if your decorations or if the mood of your page has a little bit more blue from the decoration this aqua diagonal stripe work, would work really well as well I'm gonna stick I think to um, traditional red green and gold so I'm going to use the more golden pieces from this and then I wanted to show you 
something beautiful and new in the store. This is from KI Memories. It's a transparency. It's screen printed with doilies and then it has gems on top. Um, so definitely a very special paper, um, not just a, a plain flat paper and something that I'll cut into a few pieces to try and get as many layouts from it as I can. Um, but definitely something that when I get it in the box, I've, this just arrived yesterday and I'm going to put it to use straight away because there's no sense in buying something that's really lovely and exciting and, and something new like this and then just letting it sit with my paper. So I want to get it on a layout straight away. Um, but I just wanted to show you that because I know you, some people are definitely missing the Hambly transparencies. This is a different company, different look, different take on transparencies, but um, something that made me a little excited to see in the store. And it looks gorgeous in real life, um, the thumbnail. I don't think you can do it justice on a screen. Okay, so those in 12 by 12 papers. So now I have all different seasons except nothing I've pulled here is actually from a specifically winter collection. Even the doily is not really from a Christmas collection. It's from a, a more generic kind of everyday type theme. And a few other little bits and pieces also from everyday type things. So I've taken the 6x6 wood grain from the Amy Tangerine Ready Set Go 6x6 pad. And because that will give me a darker color, it's neutral but it has a bit of texture. And I really like wood grain um, as a, a pattern that doesn't, it, it's rich without taking your attention away from all the other elements on the page. I have this red journaling box, which is from a Pebbles notepad, which looks like this, and has all sorts of different bits and pieces inside. Um, some are full 4x6, some landscape, and some portrait, and then some are half the sheet where you cut them apart. And for anything that doesn't suit your um, style, for example, there's one that says favorite things, and it has the spelling of favorite that I wouldn't use. The back of all the... Um, all the different boxes. It's all just great polka dot patterns in nice colors that are easy to use. And um, so there's no need to waste anything. If there's one that doesn't work, I can just turn it over and use that other side since they've printed nice, easy to use patterns there. And then I pulled three washi tapes, again staying with red, green, and gold. So red with white stars I thought was quite Christmassy, green with little polka dots, and then this one from KI Memories which is gold and says smile, smile, smile all over it. Um, see, I'm not sure if I'll need all three, but I wanted to pick one of each of those three colors um, to see if I, well, to make sure I'd have the options. And then this lovely new product. This is Heidi Swap Color Shine. It's a new mist. And to be honest, at first I thought, well, I have plenty of mists. Why do I need something new? And, and if you're thinking the same thing, I really encourage you to order the Gold Lame and try it out. And I'm gonna, I definitely will use it on this page. The gold works. Um, it has a much different look, just more shimmery, uh, better coverage than any other gold I've tried, and I really like it. And I do like how they've engineered the bottles so that this is one you're meant to shake. And there is a shaker in there, and the label tells you to shake well, and you can see all the color mixing around so you know when it is um, ready to go. Um, it does, when you leave it and, and store it, it will settle. The gold will go to the bottom, but just shake it up and it's brand new again, no problem. Um, and I've been using it with the eyedropper from the Mr. Hueys, um, so I'll use that today. And then I pulled out just one thing that was specifically Christmas Christmassy um, to have on hand and see how it goes, and that's a set of LA Studio journaling tags, and um, so I get all sorts of different options. And um, there's both white and cream-based patterns in the same pack, which means you get quite a lot to uh, mix and match with different papers depending on what you pick. So I'm going to have those kind of on on board, as it were, and and then I have two old Christmas Polaroids. So. Those are all supplies from different collections that are not Christmassy. Um, and so I uh, am going to go ahead and get this page started and see if I can manage to make something that looks very traditional Christmas, red, green, and gold, without using lots of Christmas themed supplies. I'm starting with the red diagonal as my 12 by 12 background so that one will stay whole. I really like diagonals for a full background because it's a design that naturally pulls your eye into the middle of the page. 
then for the next largest box I want to include the other most important colors. So if I want this to be very traditional Christmas colors, I need the two largest elements to be red and green. So I've cut the green pattern paper with the vine print down to about 8 by 11. And then I'll just attach this so that I make sure I'm covering the center of the page but then I'm off that center in just a little bit one way or the other. Um, you can bring it up or you can bring it down to the bottom of the page but by covering the center and then moving in one direction slightly tends to give you a good, um, a good amount of pattern on show and good balance to the rest of the page. And then I cut just a narrow strip of that yellow pattern that I mentioned earlier and trimmed it just shy of the 12 inch width so that it'll go across the green but not all the way across the red. And that gives me my grounding strip. So this is really easy place to start and um, make sure that I have somewhere horizontal. I've got all three colors represented straight away and now I can start to add in the other elements that I want to use. Now, I wanted to use the wood grain pattern as a little bit of an embellishment in a, a different way than normal, perhaps. So I'm going to remove the border, and then I think I want to use about this much. I'm just going to make a little crease and so that I can see it from the other side. And then I want to use this space here, and I'm going to take um, just pen or a pencil, anything like that. And I want to do three shapes that I'm going to cut out. This works with really simple shapes if you're going to cut them by hand. If you want something a little bit more ornate or you don't want to use your scissors, then this is a great time to use a digital die cutter or anything like that. But I'm just going to draw three stars in a row and then use my scissors to cut them out. Now the reason I only made a crease here and didn't um, didn't go ahead and cut it straight away was in case my drawing went over the line which it did just ever so slightly so I'm going to take this to my trimmer and cut so that I have um, a nice even box and this star isn't going to go off the edge of the page and then I'm just going to take my scissors and cut out these three shapes so that I will have the piece with the window so I don't I um, really mind if these three stars, if the, pe the little pieces themselves end up really messy. What's important is the nice frame shape that I'm going to get um, once I'm finished cutting. Once I've cut the shapes from the, the paper and I have that frame piece left, and you can definitely do this with a digital die cutter if you prefer. I just find with really simple shapes, it's just a little bit quicker for me to do it with scissors than to pull out all of the, um, the mechanical stuff. Then I can take this piece and start putting it over the top of my different pattern papers to see what paper is going to give me a look that I like the best. So different things work in different ways. So here, this one makes the stars most obvious because it's the most subtle and the most solid color option. And something like this polka dot, the pattern is busy enough because it's quite a large polka dot that it's a little bit harder to tell that the shapes are stars. And something like this journaling piece, the contrast is great and it shows nice and um, uh, nice clean lines of the stars but the vertical stripes are perhaps not my favorite and I might if I was going to use this one turn it this way and just cut pieces and paste them on the back so it wouldn't be very pretty from be from the back of this and um, but then I could get those nice horizontal lines across the stars but I also had a one other option that I thought I might use the three different washi tapes together and create a background behind each of the stars to show strips of the washi tape through the little windows. So for that I'm going to need another layer of paper underneath. So I'm just going to grab a scrap of paper because I'm going to cover it up. So I'll grab something from my scrap basket and then I'm going to run lengths of the different tapes to correspond with the placement of the different stars. I'll need to just mark off a few little places by placing it on top and pencil marking the corners so that I know where my different colors should start and stop.
Here's my washi tape covered piece. So I just used craft cardstock and covered it with the different strips of tape. And when I place this over the top, I end up with my different, let's see, which way did I do it? Yeah, I end up with a different window of color in each one. There we go. And it, it definitely works easiest with that smallest pattern. The polka dot is probably the cleanest look of the three, but because I'm going to use the, th the tapes elsewhere on the page and the pattern will be more obvious somewhere else, so I think that will work well. I'm just going to hold this down while I put some adhesive in the spots where it's not going to show through the windows. Decided to pull in a little bit more red as the matte for the star accent piece. Um, but it's not from a Christmas collection. It's again just um, another general collection. So this is from the Jelly Bean Soup Staples collection, which has a mini polka dot on one side and a chevron on the other and is available in all different colors. And I added a little bit of baker's twine just thinking I wanted a little bit of texture in this part of the page, but I'm not quite sure if I'll want to tie something onto this string or just leave it in a little bow or something. So for right now, it's just knotted so that I have it there and it's not going to um, drive me batty while I'm working on the rest of the page. Now, I want to work in this space to create a title. And for some reason, um, my grandfather went mad with the Polaroid this particular year at the shopping center with the um, the train and I've actually done multiple layer uh, multiple layouts about this particular um, tradition of going to the shopping center to ride the Christmas train so I don't want to retell that same story so instead I had a little brainstorm when I would would come across these photos in my collection and thought what I don't have in my more formal albums or my growing up album is something that documents the hometown traditions at Christmas for me so I'm going to use the journaling space on this page to write about not just what was in the photo but to list out lots of different traditional memories that I have of of, um, of Christmas growing up and because I keep separate journals for Christmas and keep little Christmas albums every year and I talk about things in the past and as well as the present um, I don't feel like I have to write an entire novel about each tradition I think when I journal this it will be mostly in a list format just little reminders of things that were very typical Christmas hometown for me um, and that's where I'm gonna go with that so I wanted to start with that home is where the heart is die cut card well it's not die cut it's from the cut apart dear lizzie sheet and i've just cut it down a little bit so it's going to fit and i want to tuck this underneath here so i'm just going to trim a little bit more off the bottom edge it doesn't really need to be straight because it's not going to show so I'll tuck this underneath here and then extend my title from there and I have a few different lettering styles that I'm going to include some great new um, wood grain thickers and some smaller stickers these called Chelsea which are actually from the Soho garden so this is not um, a Christmas collection and the wood grain was from an autumn collection and these layered letters from the Amy Tangerine um, Ready Set Go and these layered letters you layer them over the top but they're semi-transparent and I'll show you in just a moment but they're really cool and you get two colors in each pack there's a few different colorways available but um, I thought I've pulled the brown to use with my Christmas supplies this year because I thought the brown and um, the screen worked really well together for a nice traditional Christmas tone but with modern fonts and styles so I think um, to make the title the most obvious if I'm going to use this as the home I need to use the largest alphabet for the word town so that you actually read the flat letters because they're quite subtle since it's tone on tone so I'll start with town in the wood grain thickers and then I'll do the rest of my title in those smaller letters. To give my title a little more um, oomph and, and some grounding, I've just added a few or two layers of the washi tape and then the transparent um, letter stickers work best on a light color because they're going to show through whatever colors behind so they work well on lighter colors if you want to be able to read them easily and 
they come with a few different shades of each color on the same sheet so that you get a little bit of variation and you can of course use them like any other letter stickers and you can spread them out and um, and they will work really well and show you the pattern underneath but if you use them close together you'll get this transparent layered look where there are, there are darker bits where the layers over or the the letters overlap because you can see not only the pattern but you can see the other shades of the letters so um, just a little something to try and they do come in all different colors and they're just um, peel and stick so nice and easy to use so I've put these on a lighter colored background and then I'm going to trim this to a little banner piece to look a little bit more festive and perhaps add a gem or something to the end there. So I'm just going to cut a little divot in that end and attach that with some pop dots and then I'll have my title running um, across here and I'll add some ink there and just a note that if you prefer titles to not be quite as um, as subtle as the tone on tone lettering here. You could always add more letter stickers to go and uh, go over the top of this and emphasize it or you could go in with the same pen that you're going to use for the journaling and outline the letters and um, it's just a case of what you prefer. I know that it may look like you look at the page and the thing that catches your eye first is town holiday traditions rather than hometown and um, so you could outline that to make it more obvious or you could cut it out and pop it up to make it more obvious but I just happen to to like the subtlety of oh you have to actually look at the page and read it for it to make sense um, and then take in that little bit more subtlety so I'm going to leave it plain as it is but I just wanted to take you through some options there in case that wasn't a good match for your style. I added my writing in just kind of a bullet pointed list format but instead of putting it all in a vertical list I spread it around I spread it out in the available space between the title and the photos and I just added a little adhesive pearl for each of the bullet points and um, just to make it a little more obvious that they are all different points and because the texture and the little bit of shine was a bit um, it's something to to break up all that text and then started to look at the other elements here for balance so I included two of my three washi tapes here with the title but I haven't included the green and I didn't run the green here because then it would overlap the green pattern paper so I thought I would bring in a little bit of that green by adding just a little bit to the top and bottom of this column. Now this strip here and here um, has the look that it was something that started as a vertical column at the beginning of the page um, but it's not. It's just two tiny little strips uh, lined up so that they're in the same place and gives that vertical element without needing to use a whole piece of paper. And it, Aside from um, saving the paper, it's also just handy when you look at a design and think it needs a little bit more direction in any particular way. So I um, just thought it needed a little bit more weight on this side of the page. Everything was kind of balancing away from the photo. And this brought it back in line so that you would read the title and see the journaling and the photo all in the same space. I want to add maybe a little bit of embellishment top and bottom here and I feel like I need something to kind of bring these three pieces together. So I'm going to look at the different elements I have and I still have that great doily transparency that I want to include. So I'll come up with a way that I can have something that repeats in three areas of the page and then that probably will get me to a finishing point. I started with that transparency sheet and cut three of the um, doilies that went off the side. So I still have plenty left. It's going to make it through lots of layouts. Um, but I'm going to use three pieces on this page so that I can have those three areas of embellishment that all have something in common. So for each one there's a little um, partial circle of a doily um, with the largest piece coming over here and then these two are the same pattern and same size and then I also punched a snowflake and um, three of them from that same pattern that I used as the mat there just a red with a tiny little polka dot and if um, 
if you were the if if your style dictates that snowflakes should be a bit more realistic color, by all means you could use um obviously you could use a white paper here. I wanted to bring in another color because I already had the white in this grouping. There's yellow, there's green, so I wanted to bring in the red. Um but you could certainly bring in red with another element, bring in um, just any other red accent, or you could just use a different shape and then you wouldn't have to have red snowflakes. But I quite like them just as a motif. I don't think they need to be literal for this page. It's not a page about snow or anything like that. So that's all okay. So I have those two things to go with each one. Now the transparencies, obviously um, it's possible to see the adhesive through different parts of the design. So I'm just adding the adhesive to the places where the pattern is most dense rather than the clear pieces so that it will be easy or it won't be easy to see the adhesive. And I'll overlap those two pieces over the um, paper and tape elements that were already there. Repeat that at the bottom. Now um, you can just cut out the transparency by hand. Where it has gems, the pieces with gems are too thick to go through a punch. Um, but I didn't have any trouble putting it through my die cutter. And I just used circle nested circle dies to, um, to get the right sizes for the different doilies that I wanted to include. But you could certainly just go around by hand because that outside edge is clear. Also added just one little piece from that L's, uh, LA Studio Christmas um, pack. So I do have one little Christmas element here, and that's a, a little die cut card that says Believe, Believe, but I've cut it down to be small. It's actually a much bigger card. And just thought that this side would need a little bit more embellishment because everything's on a bigger scale over here. Just finding a spot for this doily so that it's tucked underneath the twine and in between the two stars so that I'm not um, confusing the elements. Hopefully it's still clear that those are stars. And then the snowflake on top of that. And I think I'll put the snowflake in this case underneath um, the twine as well. But I want my little gem to show up there. I'll just come to this um, bottom one especially and cut off the extra from the other side. You can um, put the transparency through your trimmer as well. Just make sure where you're lining up that there's not a gem in the way so that you don't get halfway through and think, oh no, everything's gone a bit wrong with that um, extra cool paper. Okay, so then um, to those little areas, then I'm going to add a, just a little sprinkling of the gold color shine with the eyedropper. So, I mean, usually you've seen me use the end to, to do droplets, um, but using the eyedropper makes bigger splotches, basically. And they are a bit easier to control, so I know that I'm not going to accidentally get ink on my photos if I'm, if I'm adding pieces here, where when I use... Um, the this the end of the sprayer it can go a little bit uh, in an unexpected direction here and there so um, handy to have an eyedropper to give you a bit more control and then this um, color shine does take a little bit longer to dry and um, because it's the me metallic and it has that uh, opacity to it and um, so it's a little bit longer to dry than Mr. Huey without any shine to it, but um, not very long at all, and it just dries with this great luster on top and looks like a really rich uh, acrylic paint, but is really easy to use in that little bottle already mixed up. And then um, while it's drying, I wanted to see if I could also use some stamps as a finishing touch that would not be a Christmas set. So I've got the Dear Lizzie Fifth and Frolic um, stamp set and it has um, little wording stamps like love, little moments, homegrown. So those are things that will all fit with my theme. So I'm just going to go in and see where there are little gaps 
and um, and add a little bit. I'm quite tempted because I have so many of these Polaroids and I have made a digital copy of the Polaroid to just go ahead and, and add a little stamp on each of the Polaroid frames. Um, I wouldn't do that if I didn't have a backup and, and probably not even with a backup I wouldn't do it if it was a one-of-a-kind Polaroid but I do have a bunch from this same event and they're all um, either in my photo files or in my albums and um, so I'm not I'm not particularly terrified to stamp on that um, in this particular instance. So I'm going to give it a try and just add a little bit of wording to finish the page. My trick for stamping when I'm not going to get a second chance, I can actually get this right once or I can mess it up entirely, is to make sure I have a little practice piece. So I stamp the same stamp with the same ink that I'm going to use and then stamp it so that I can get an idea of how much pressure I need to put on that stamp. Because small clear stamps especially, if you press too hard, you'll get a really um, muddy uh, quality and, and they can smear. So, and if you press too lightly, then you'll get gaps in the stamp design. So you want to just kind of have a little practice to make sure that it's working just right with the strength um, of your hand and then Bring it over, look through the block, and try and get that pressure exactly as you did on your example. And then with a little bit of luck, you'll get a perfect stamp impression. So here's my finished page for this week. And your challenge is to choose any theme that you want. It might be a different holiday. It could be Christmas, but it could be any other holiday. And then create a mix of papers that come from different collections, different manufacturers, but are not specific to that theme. So if you're doing Christmas, no Christmas papers. If you're doing Thanksgiving, no Thanksgiving papers. And see what kinds of combinations you can come up with that still look classically in line with that theme, even though the products weren't the items that were sold for that particular um, event or occasion or season. Now, um, the reason I, uh, one other reason that I wanted to bring you a little holiday adventure this week is that if you're watching while this is brand new, there's a great two-piece sale on at the moment that lets you um, do all your Christmas shopping and get up and um, get 25 percent off your order and um, so there's all sorts of different ways and you can find the details of that sale at two peas in a bucket but um, your time's pretty limited and 25 percent off uh, everything in your order is a, a pretty good deal so read the details um at two peas obviously i won't go through all the the fine print here but um, it's quite a good deal and you can pick what you want so you can make your own christmas kit and if you want some suggestions my little friend mild-mannered scrapbooker shamel lane has picked out her um favorite christmas supplies and she's posted that online for you as well in case you want a little inspiration in picking your own in picking your kit this year so i hope um that you enjoy pulling different papers and things and using them for something a little bit different than what they were perhaps marketed to be. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.